Alrighty guys, welcome back. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to list, create, and start containers, learning some more Docker commands. So let's just go ahead and dive right into it. Now, the first command is docker container ls. Now this ls command is to list all of your containers. Now by default, it only shows your running containers. So I'm gonna hit enter and we see that these are actually column names and we don't have any containers listed because we don't have any containers running right now. Now, if you, let me go ahead and actually, well, I can run like this to compare. All right. Now, if instead of just running Docker container LS, I run Docker container LS with this A at the end, dash A, this is a flag to show all the containers that have ever been created. So I'm gonna hit this and let me expand my window so you guys can see. All right, it's, <laughs> it's a little bit better. I have to make the text big on my terminal so you guys can see on uh, YouTube, but it's, uh, <laughs> it takes up a large portion of the screen, so it's kind of funky whenever I'm recording. But anywho, let's just jump right into it. So now we see our containers, and these are the containers that we created in the last video, and I'll walk you guys through what each of these columns mean. So this container ID, as you can see, this is just a unique ID. It's created from a SHA-256 hash. And it's just that, it's just a random hash that Docker creates for you as an identifier for the container. Just an ID number, nothing fancy. The image, you guys can probably guess what this is, is just the name of the image that was used to create this container. This command column, this is actually the default command that was ran whenever you created this container and created again this is just the date and time that the container was created the status and let me slide this bad boy over so you guys can see the rest of this all right so the status right here is the status of the container uh, of course pretty uh pretty self-explanatory there but this actually is not going to make a lot of sense until we talk about the life cycle of containers but that's later on down in a future video for right now just um you know this is the status of the container that's good for now now these ports right here which we don't see any this is also we're going to touch on this more later on but in case you just want to know exactly what they are it's a list of container ports mapped to the host and last but not least, the names column is the names assigned to a container. Now, fun fact, we can actually specify our own name. Now, if we don't specify our own name for a container, then Docker is gonna create a random one for us. And that is why you see these kind of weird looking uh, names right here. Just a random name. If you wanna override that, kind of like you can a uh, default command, you can. But that is the basics of the columns whenever you list out your containers. Now, the next two commands I want to talk to you guys about are the create and start commands. Now, you guys can probably figure out just by the name what these do, but you're probably scratching your head because, okay, these commands apparently are going to create a container and then start a container. But didn't we already learn how to do that through this run command? Well, believe it or not, this run command is actually a shortcut for these two separate commands. If you do create plus start, it basically is the same thing as running this run command. Now, what's the point of having all these commands which apparently do the same thing? Well, let's go ahead and break it down right now. So instead of run, I'm just gonna go ahead and create this hello world container. Now, real quick, what this command is gonna do is, again, to be specific, it's gonna create a container from the specified image and it's gonna prepare it to be ran on your operating system, but it's not actually going to run the container itself. So whenever I run this, you see that we now get this back right here. Okay, what the heck is this? Did someone just hack my computer? Not exactly. So whenever we just run the create command, what does it returns the ID of the container that was just created? Now we can see this or verify it if we run docker container lsa like we just did a few minutes ago. And all right, forgot all my uh, my screen size issues again. But what was this up here? FAAC35, and we can now see FAAC35. This is the ID of that very first or most recent container created 23 seconds ago. All right, fair enough. Now, another thing that I want to point out that I probably should have just right then was this. 
Now, aside from just saying that, okay, yep, that's the right ID. This is the container you created. Now, 50 seconds ago, the status is now created. Huh, that's interesting because all the rest of these containers that we created that were created using the run command, their status is exited. But this one is just created. All right, so what, what exactly is going on here? Now, believe it or not, this concept may actually be easiest to understand if we just go ahead and run the start command itself. So before I run the start command, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this container ID. And another thing to note is that whenever you're referencing a container, you don't actually need to copy the entire ID. You just need this little snippet. So let me go ahead and run this command, which is docker container start. Now I'm gonna include another flag, which is dash A. In dash A, in this case, it means attach or basically print any output from this container right into our terminal. If we didn't include it, then you just couldn't see any of the output. So I'm gonna start this container right here, which is F-A-A-C, yada, yada, tomato, tomato. So now let's go ahead and start that. And okay, it looks like it kind of just did what run did earlier on. But now let me go ahead and run this command again, which lists all our, our containers. And all right, so this was the container we just created and ran in before, huh, that's interesting. Let me scroll back up here. So before it said status created, but then after we started it, it now says status exited. So why did that happen? Well. This container, whenever it runs, it has one simple job. It gets created, it runs or starts, and its only job is to print stuff out on the screen and then it exits. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a very simple uh, program, kind of a worthless server if you wanna think of it like that, but that's kind of the mini life cycle that happened. So again, just to reiterate some of these concepts, the create command, what this does is it just creates a container from the specified image and it prepares it to run on your operating system. Now the start command just starts the container. It's basically like uh, starting or booting up your computer after you installed an operating system or something. Now the run command is a, a shortcut to tie both of those together where if you just ran the create command and then the start command right after, since people just kept doing that all the time over and over again, Docker just unified that by creating that run command and that's where we're gonna be sticking to most of the time. But that is your little knowledge of all those commands. And the last thing I wanna do before I let you guys go is just show you guys a quick trick not even trick, just a command to um, clean up all your containers. So we already know that, okay, if we list out all our containers, we get all this stuff. Now, how do I clear those out? Well, if you run docker system prune, and then you can just use the flag all, and this all just says remove all unused images, not just dangling ones. And again, I don't wanna introduce too much stuff in this tutorial, but a dangling image, is just one that is not tagged and is not referenced by another container. Again, you don't need to know uh, dangling containers or tags or anything like this. Just wanna show you guys how to clean up all your containers for now. You'll understand this in the future video, but for now, let's just run this. Yes, verify that that is what I wanna do. Okay, look, you got all this memory back. Very cool. And now, Jeez, drag racing going on outside. Now, if I run this command again, you'll see all your containers are now cleaned up. So, a uh, lot of information in that tutorial. I'll give you guys a little bit <laughs> time to absorb that. But again, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.